You know, it's really disheartening how many of the atheists are former believers, and I realize that. But I don't think they realize what's going to happen to them in the end. I I think you're right. You know... I don't think any of us know what's going to happen to us. I believe in a literal hell. I'm sorry? And where are they going to end up when they die? I mean, have you thought about it? But, uh, what, you, you say you believe in a liter- literal hell? Yes, I do. And you think that we atheists deserve to go there? No. We don't? I don't, I don't then want how to come, go. Then how but come, then how come I you... Just, ma'am? Yeah, Denise? go ahead. So if you, you believe there's a hell, and you yep. believe the atheists are going to go there, because yep. why? Your God's going to send us there, right? No. They no? send themselves there by rejecting no, 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 Jesus no, no, as no, their no, Savior. No, 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 that's yeah, silly. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's silly. I'm choosing right now, silly. I don't want to go to hell, okay? You so now your God has the option of either sending me or not. Jesus has thrown you a life preserver. That's why he's called the Savior. Uh, ma'am? You guys have been ridiculous enough to reject it. Where did, where did hell come from? It's in the Bible. He spoke about it many times. I believe in it. If you don't... No, no, no. no. I, Denise, I'm just asking a question. Did God create hell? Well, actually, God originally created hell for Satan and his demons. We so, weren't supposed to go there. Sure. So what, what determination was there in your religion? Why, why did God decide to start sending people to hell? I mean, you don't Again, think... Again, he doesn't send them to hell. You guys send yourselves. Okay. Uh, we don't. That's nonsense. Yeah, we have the choice. Is. We have the choice. We choose not to go. Now, your God is back. The ball's back in his court. If he wants to send us, he can. Is he gonna? You send yourself. No, we don't. How that's ridiculous. You send yourself. No, he that's ridiculous, ma'am. Here's the thing, Denise. It doesn't matter how many times you keep repeating this. I'm trying well, to... Well, you keep repeating your stuff. That I, I'm, let, me, let me try something. I tried something else, which was... Did God create hell? If so, then he's ultimately responsible for it, correct? Does he not make the rules? Do things not happen? Denise, 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 do things not happen according to your God's will? Does he not already know? He's everybody's God. You keep referring to him as my God. He's everyone's God. No, he's not my God. I don't even believe he exists. But in any case, I don't care whether... In any case, I don't care how you pretend to label. I'm trying to get to the to the source of the problem here, and it, and it's this because you you, you were saying you know, Jesus threw threw you a life preserver. As far as I'm concerned, um, within the bounds of your theology, Jesus kicked me overboard because you you he believe didn't kick you overboard. You, you sure he did. May I? Sure he did. Because May I? hang on. Okay. Did your God create hell? Yes she or said, no? She said yes. Yes. Okay. Does your God create the rules? of the universe, including the criteria by which souls are judged? Yes. Does anything happen that doesn't go according to your God's will? No. Then your God is ultimately responsible for everything, including the people who he sends to hell. That is so messed up. I mean... (laughs) Yeah, that that logic (laughs) stuff, it's a real pain in the ass, isn't it? It is messed up, ma'am. And when you reject him, that's the dumbest thing you can possibly do. That's why he's called the... Savior. And Ooh. and I have a question. Go ahead. What are we being yep. saved? What are you being what are we being saved from exactly? You're being saved from eternal damnation. But why well, um, hell. Have you ever been a Christian? Yes, I was. For how many years? Oh, till I was about twenty one, twenty two. What happened? Uh, we understand. Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I thought about whether there was any reason to believe any of that stuff and uh i f- and it and it scared me because i had been raised to believe in a you know a kind and loving god but you know to fear this kind and loving god and so every time it it, it occurred to me to question that my fear got in the way eventually i said to myself you know if God is really kind and loving, he's not going to mind me using my brain, the brain that he gave me, to think clearly, carefully, and rationally about the stuff that I've been taught and to make my own decision. And the moment that I realized a kind and loving God would not, uh, is, it was not to be feared uh, when, I, when I'm considering you know, rethinking my beliefs, that gave me the freedom to think clearly about my beliefs, and within a minute, 
I realized this is all nonsense. I'm an atheist. And, and I'll actually go one step further here. And, and even if I were to concede your, your, what I consider to be a ridiculous framing that God doesn't send people to hell, people to send, send themselves to hell, even if I were to accept that, um, I won't even necessarily go to the mafia boss analogy that I think is completely valid. Um, my, my point of view is this. You have a, a being, according to your theology, that can possibly prevent people from having to suffer eternally. And he has, instead of being good and just and caring and actually doing that, is offering a kind of bribe. And the bribe is, you need to believe without evidence, and you need to worship and adhere and follow my commands. That's not love. That is oh, not. That is not. Here, that right. is not love. That is not an uh, exercise of love. That is not a. Save you. I mean, he went through. Hell he didn't to die. Save you. Do you he not was wait? The one that paid the price. Da if Denise. Denise. Him, you know, Denise. That's their decision. Right. Then why the fuck did you call? Excuse me. I, I, I you just, can't be a lot more civil to someone that calls in without using filthy language? Filthy what? language? Well, hang on. First of all, you called to tell this us... This conversation is over. God bless you. I hope all of you see the light. He is the only way. Are Goodbye. You, are you done? Oh. Yeah, she's hanging up now. I used a word that Denise hurt her feelings. Hey, it, it doesn't surprise me. And um, while we'll have to put a little disclaimer on this particular issue, it doesn't surprise me that somebody who is so muddled in their thinking and is so afraid of the irrational would give magic powers to words. Guess what? It's four letters, letters. it's phonemes, they don't have any magical powers. It's a way of expressing an exclamation mark. You called. And then when things got too heated, you tried to do this, well, it's all up to you guys, and if you reject him, that's your responsibility, etc., which was your way of giving up. All you wanted to do was call in and state your opinion and move on. So when I ask, why the fuck did you call, I wasn't cursing you out. I was exclaiming that this is absurd for you to call in and do this to call in and pretend like you're going to defend your beliefs, and then when they're challenged directly to a point that you can't defend them, you, you cry that your feelings got hurt because somebody used a word that was scary. It's no wonder that you are still stuck in this mindset of being afraid of fantasy if one little word sends you screaming off, of, oh, the poor atheists, they're beating up on me and they're saying offensive things. Can, can we spend a little time on this whole thing of we send ourselves to hell? Yeah. Yeah, please. That's that is okay. I'm I'm holding it's a I'm holding a gun to your head, yeah. Telling you to give me a hundred dollars. Don't make me shoot you. Yeah. That's what it is. It's that exactly is what that. that that's what that arrangement is. No, that is if Matt refuses to give me a hundred dollars, he did not commit suicide. It's why I've used the mafia boss analogy before, because it's why I asked if you thought your God created hell. Because the mafia boss creates the scenario where, A, we can protect you from this stuff, but you've got to be making payments. <laughs> and <laughs> when somebody comes along to break my thumbs for not making payments, that wasn't my choice. I mean, you're saying that my choice is to make those payments or get my ass kicked. And in your theology, my choice is to uh, accept something that my brain can't possibly accept because it's irrational and without evidence, and then go the step further of becoming worshipful and adherent to this fantasy. Well, I won't do it because I see what happens when people do become worshipful and adherent to that fantasy. Even if I could convince myself to, to go ahead and accept the delusion, it is harmful and it is immoral and your theology is immoral. And what you are saying about there being a literal hell and that God gets to wash his hands of the, it's all completely immoral. You have lost your own sense of dignity, self-respect, humanity, and morality. I loved how you laid out the the logical chain connecting God with responsibility for people going to hell. And she goes, that's fucked up. Yeah, and, well, she, didn't say, and, she wouldn't say that. Oh, right, that's messed up, she said. All right, so um, now, now we have three F-bombs. It, it sure is messed up, ma'am. And, and yet, it wasn't Matt's chain of logic that was messed up. It was the fact that you're in a religion where that chain of logic can easily be drawn and, uh, and you just avoid it. 
I'm surprised she didn't come down with the vapors. Amazing. I'm sorry that I offended your Victorian sense of morality or immorality, uh, but some of us live in the real word, world and aren't afraid of a couple words on occasion. However, if Denise wants to call back, I promise I won't drop another F-bomb while telling her what an idiot she's being about her thinking on these subjects. And that doesn't mean I think she's stupid across the board. That We've had lots of discussions about this, you know, don't be a dick type thing. Um, but I, when I say that somebody's stupid, guess what? I'm stupid. Jeff's stupid. The people in the audience hey. are stupid. We are all stupid at some time about something. Yeah. The difference is that some of us, when we have this pointed out to us or when we recognize it in ourselves, strive to overcome it. We say, you know what? I was being stupid. Let's correct that so that I'm not stupid about other things. And other people say, I'm not stupid. They deny. It's this, it's this massive ego that prevents them from denying, from accepting that they too can be wrong, that they too can make stupid mistakes. And that is what makes they take offense to this. Oh, you called me stupid. You called, yeah, I did. Get over it. Call me stupid back. We've both been stupid about something. When you have that sort of reaction to somebody telling you that your beliefs on a certain subject are stupid or that you're being an idiot about something in particular, first of all, they're most likely not summing up your entire character. They're most likely not saying you are a complete useless brain that can't do anything right. They are talking within the context of that subject. If your initial reaction is to simply take offense and shut down the conversation, that's ego. It's not logic. You didn't win. You don't have any high ground, intellectual, moral, or otherwise. It's ego. It is your own inner self saying, I couldn't possibly be wrong. How dare you challenge me? And it's no different than making up nonsense crap about somebody using the F word or whatever.